I can have yours, well. Today only. They've scored this to Voss today. You guys in betting are Very good price, too. I'm happy with that price. I normally see these around at the shops, but they're already bought by the store owners for some second hand shops. And they ask about them, and they go, and say, Yeah, I paid like 40, 50, 6, upwards of $80 for some. So, considering this is a fair price, I'm happy with it. It all works. The set works, but. Talks a bit questionable, though. The guy uh, sold this to me, says, I didn't test the cassette. He says, If the cassette player worked, I would have sold it a lot more. So, I didn't say anything about the cassette work or not, didn't test it, got it for this price, it's got the Pierre's A tweeters, but this thing sounds good, it's a, uh, I'll get the model for you, it's all working very good, multi-band, got line inputs, got Dolby, it supports uh, metal, uh, oh, not chrome, but metal, there's your line inputs, your radio and line switch, you won't right, manually you don't switch it from the front. It doesn't have it on here. You get it switch it on the back. I think it's on the cassette. It overrides the cassette part, part and you can record off the line input. Big uh, six inch, eight inch speakers, I think. The six inch speakers. It's a Japanese made. It's pretty light, but it's still a pretty good quality unit. It sounds very good. It's a M9880K model. So they're from the yellow to mid 80s. There was an RX series uh, Panasonic boom box, very similar to my red um, Panasonic, National Panasonic RX F22, my red one. Very similar to that, but more uh, higher. Um, and it was long. It had the exact same features as my, as my one does. But the guy I bought this off, he, um, yeah, he bought that himself. And I have come yesterday, oh man, I would have bought it. But unfortunately, he got it. But I told him the story. He goes, Oh, yeah, very good. I, I fixed boom boxes up. So he's got my phone number now. If he wants to get the cassette mechanism uh, working on it again, he knows who to call. So, and yeah, here's a guy that sold, sold me this one. Yeah, I've got talking and found this one at the back for me. So, before I went out in the um, showroom, stereo mech. And I think he might be right. He was saying it the movie Grease. There was a scene in the movie Grease. There's a guy holding exact. A model like this, holding it up on his shoulder, in the, in the scene, one of the scenes in the movie Grease. So this is that very same model as this one. The fine tuning part doesn't work, but I've got to fix that. That's the only thing I can say that's wrong with it. That's kind of important when you're shortwave DXing. Trust me, you got to have that working. It's just not the same when you're DXing on shortwave, and this doesn't work. As I said, it's pretty light, less, probably a kilo or less in that range. But it's still a pretty good boom box. Yeah, that Panasonic one, he bought that. It's a shame, but uh, I think it went to a good home. He likes them like I do, so I'm sort of happy about that. Yeah, as I said, I can, uh, if you need help getting the cassette mechanism fixed on that boom box, he knows it to call, so. Anyway, let's get this going. Uh, pull this apart, check the belt, because I know the torque's a bit questionable. That's not really going to work on auto stop. It does, but I've got to put a little bit of force on that. I'm making it a bit better. I've got to clean it out anyway, fix this up anyway. So let's get this thing apart. While I'm there, I'll just check the belts. As I said, the torque on the take up is a bit questionable, so it can affect the um, auto stop. So I've got to have that working properly. As I said, the antenna is absolutely in good condition. There's no bends or anything in it, so it's still a good price. Considering you see these on, on, on Gumtree and places like that, and they just even ones that are faulty, they're still on like $60, $70 for them, so it's not a good price. Put that circuit port back in, eh? A lot of trouble getting that bloody volume knob off. I um, had no choice, I couldn't get my tool behind there, bits of wire. There's just no way to get wire in there to pull it off like a Canemy Sharp. I had to use a pliers, I had no choice. Tiny bit of scuffing on it. It's got a UPC1277H NEC um, audio airport IC. That's like the one in my Panasonic boom box. Nice and big. Nice power supply there. Sanyo brand capacitor. Nice. Their own brand components. They counterbuilt. Yeah, it's not too bad. This is lightly here. Oh, you can see there. I've got to clean that. A bit cracked though. Yeah, see, yeah, I have to fix that. That's what my half of my problem is at the torque. I've got to clean it carefully, but 
don't hold this because if that grabs too hard now, that's actually going to tear off that rubber. So I'm going to have to be careful of that. Nice heads. Looks like it's an AC bias one too. That pinch roller. Yeah, it's still rubbery, that's all right. That will clean up. So let's get this mechanism out, but we'll just check the belt. Yeah, as I said, that torque, as I said, was a bit questionable. So we'll see what's, what it looks like from the back. That should clean up all right. As you can see, Pierre's A tweeters, Sanyo branded speakers. It's a four ohm, four watt, maximum power of seven watts, which for something like this is amazing, right? Like, it's actually on par with this. And that's a pretty good beam box. Nice, very nice. So now I'm going to clean all this out, clean the windows out, clean all this muck out at the bottom of it, get it really clean. She's going to work awesome. It already works awesome now, but it'll be uh, I'll definitely need to clean up. Bend that microphone back down. It actually sits inside here, so I'm going to be careful how I put this back together. They're going to sit in there against those O-rings, so I'm going to be careful how I reassemble this. i to line it all back up. This is all dirty. My fine tuner behind here. Try to find out what's wrong with that. Why that doesn't work? It's behind here somewhere. Might have to pull this board out to fix it because that should actually make this move and fine tune it, but it doesn't work. Got to find out what the deal with that is. I got to have that working. As I said, it's important when you listen to the shortwave. It helps a lot to have that working. Okay, well I've got the cassette mechanism working. That works like really nice now. Much better torque. I thought it was questionable because I just looked at that belt. Normally you can turn the capstan flywheel by hand and if the motor does not spin by the belt, you know the belt's too loose. So change the belt if the motor doesn't turn when you turn the uh, capstan flywheel by finger. General rule of thumb, if you turn the capstan flywheel by finger and the motor turns, the belt's fine. But in this case, the motor wasn't turning. The belt didn't have enough um, uh, tension to turn the motor on its own. So yeah, change it. It's a good thing I did change it because it's actually working really good now. As for this, well, it's not actually a geared, um, it's not actually like the other Sanyo I've got, where it's geared inside here, you got like a gear, and this tunes slightly. This is actually a capacitor, um, a variable capacitor type of um, fine tuning, like my National Panasonic green box has got. So this is actually fine, it's a capacitor instead of um, a gear box sort of thing. So that's all right, I'll put everything back together, it's all cleaned up. Actually, I'll give the switches a good spray. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Spray the switches and then put it back together. And get that record playback switch a good clean. That's a good idea. Okay, if yours, well they cleaned up quite well. It all works good. I cleaned it up, cleaned on the switches. This thing works bloody brilliantly. Now they're clean off all this now, the cosmetic side of it. I'm happy with that. It works and sounds a treat. I'll do a final check with the cassette mechanism later to make sure the speed's correct. I'll do that later though, because I may have to um, investigate. There, there is a hole there, but I don't, I don't know if it goes to the motor or not to adjust the speed, but I'll find that out later. Anyway, it's all nice and uh, functionality and electronically um, in peak condition, working very well. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.